then we started finding something really curious, and that was pilots passing out while they were flying planes. And there were a couple of big stories where this happened. One, both pilots passed out at the same time in the UK flying an aircraft. Pilots having seizures, having heart attacks. And so I, I started looking into this and found through using a variety of sources because it's difficult information to come by. The NTSB, the National Transportation and, and Safety Bureau, does not keep these kind of statistics unless something results in a crash. And you're probably wondering, what, how is this getting to German wings? But you're going to see the, the connection here in a moment. So we had this, you know, we start searching through the archives using the Wayback Machine, using every source that we could find. And there were actually six documented cases of pilots passing out while they're flying a plane since 2004. And that was seven years before Fukushima happened. And we had 17 events involving 19 different pilots in the past three years after Fukushima happened. And that did not include 11 military pilots that passed out flying F-22s. That was something that might be in a whole different category because there was an issue with the type of vest that they were wearing. So I... I dropped that data out of it, but we had six before in seven years and 19 in three years' time. And so I presented this, this information. I did a, a lengthy interview with Alfred Weber of ExoPolitics about this, and I just started getting intel from just all over the place, from people who worked in the industry. And so as I'm looking through all this data, you know, I'm, I'm sending it to people that I really, really trust with this information. Some people that I know that work in the industry, some of them who I know since childhood. And what one of them said to me in particular is you need to start looking at the planes falling apart because the same mechanism of the way the radiation is affecting people, and we know that it's, there's contamination in the atmosphere, there's still contamination from bomb testing in the upper atmosphere. We know that, you know, we get cosmic radiation from the sun, so that's already affecting them. Pilots and flight crews have a much higher incidence of getting skin cancer and breast cancer, and now it sounds like brain cancer too, because that's been happening a lot. But the same kind of mechanism where there's this decay of a radioactive atom, it breaks off into two new atoms, and then there's an electron charge that will affect any kind of materials that is around it. And it's called the Wigner effect or Wigner effect. And it was named after a guy who worked for the government who did all kinds of research on this at, um, I believe it was Oak Ridge Labs in Tennessee, post-World War II. And they know that it happens in reactors. They know that it happens at nuke plants all over the place because there's so much, you know, radiation that's coming out of these places, the pipes break down and the concrete falls apart and sometimes the reactors even crack. And in Belgium, they found out recently that one set of reactors in particular had 16,000 cracks in just one reactor vessel. And it's this effect of this um, uh, Wigner effect that causes this. And I thought, could this possibly be happening in planes too? I mean, this would just be something I would have never, never occurred to me to study if I hadn't already known that the pilots were passing out and having seizures and heart attacks, much more than they had in the past before Fukushima. So we started tracking those events. And I did a, um, a fairly lengthy interview with uh, Dr. Loren Murray, who has worked with... Um, Doug Rokey, who you've had on your show about DU and the effect that it has on soldiers. And um, we broke this down and tried to um, lay it out in its like, very understandable history, starting with like what has happened in the nuke industry that explains this, what has happened with the Fukushima accident, and now what are we seeing happening in planes. And when you're Flying at altitude, the radiation is much higher up 
at altitude than it is on the ground. And part of that is due to cosmic sources. And I've actually flown a couple times since Fukushima happened with a Geiger. And I was just like astounded at the levels that I was getting because I knew they were high, but I wasn't expecting them to be as high as they were. And so other researchers have done this too. And there has been a few that have even had their Geigers confiscated by TSA before they board a plane. They don't want you taking Geigers on planes anymore. And really what we need to do is have a plane outfitted with these. Is there a so law we, against it though? Not that I know of. I mean, Unless isn't it technically just a another Patriot a, Act thing? Isn't it like this? Stomach- <laughs> well, I mean, it's not a bomb, and they know it's a Geiger counter. I mean, is there? Uh, it, what are they going to try to charge you with? Will you trying to cause panic? No, it's an indicator. I want to know how much radiation I'm being exposed to. But we started then getting also, and you know, we're looking at all this data. And I mean, in case you do watch the news, you may have noticed that we've had three major airliners go down in the last 87 days. And um, all of them weird, and now this latest one, they are attributing to the pilot went crazy and locked the other pilot out of the cockpit and purposely crashed the plane into a mountainside. And so, (sighs) after the years of bomb testing, there was a researcher, he's actually a professor from San Jose State University, And he was an associate of Ernest Sternglass, too. And he actually linked aggression and crime to fallout in cities downwind of nuke explosions during bomb testing. And what he said in this paper is that the effect of radiation exposure worked on the brain in the same way. We know that it affects the, the part of the brain, the executive complex that keeps you from like doing crazy stuff and controlling impulses and possibly being suicidal on a plane or you know um, any kind of other acts and there's been a number of these that have happened in the recent past I mean it happens from time to time sure and people drink on the planes and and stuff like that but lately there's been some weird ones and the people who fly more often are going to be affected more by this. It can cause like seizure-like activity in the brain where the person almost can't function or have like rational thought. They went to New York to stand in unity with thousands of officers from around the country at the funeral of slain NYPD policeman Win Jean Lu. They were returning home last night on JetBlue Flight 71 from JFK when a 32-year-old woman from Long Island got into a fight with her husband. After the two were separated, the hysterical woman started taking pills and wrote a suicide note. I just grabbed the pill bottle out of her hand and and the note she was going to put on her lap and it explained what she had done to kill herself. The woman went into a rage, assaulting the officers, the flight crew, and a doctor from the Huntsman Cancer Institute who was trying to help. He was trying to get the pills out of her mouth, and or her mouth, and she bit down on his hand, and it was very painful, he said. To, he was telling me how painful it was, so we had to actually uh, open her jaws so he could withdraw his hands from her mouth. She was extremely combative. She was kicking and, and spitting and throwing things around. And it was pretty much a, a, a street fight at 30,000 feet. Christina, we were discussing when we got cut off by the break, this, this interesting, uh, I don't want to say, well, I, I guess it's a theory, but it is based off actual scientific data and research um, that the radiation could be affecting the brains of people in flight. Uh, or being exposed to this level of radiation uh, could could be exposed, you know, could be affecting people's brains. One of the questions that goes along with that, at least in my eyes, is how long is this stuff going to be suspended in the atmosphere for? Like, how long could this be a potential problem for? Well, about eighty-five percent of what was released during bomb testing is still in the upper atmosphere. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Wow, you just you just stunned even me. It's not many people that can make me speechless, young lady. <laughs> you just made my you just made my jaw hit the floor. 
85 percent from the bomb testing in like the 50s and the 60s is still up there yeah oh my god yeah you know fukushima didn't blow that high like there there was one like pretty massive explosion and that one uh went up possibly in as far as the jet stream but more likely it was just in the tropopause and the tropopause is that very dynamic area of the atmosphere where all, where all of our storms are generated out of so in a way the atmospheric fallout is kind of like trapped in the upper layers and um and then of course with the the addition of like cosmic radiation which varies at certain times and that was another thing that i had wanted to bring up is i'm not the only one who's like talking about high rad levels in flight it's actually been talked about three or four times recently by spaceweather.com and the way that came about is one of their scientists was flying to a meeting and he had brought a geiger on a plane with him and he was shocked at how high the radiation levels were and so as soon as they got back in fact i have this article up it said the flux of cosmic rays around earth has been increasing for the past week to investigate spaceweather.com and the students of earth to sky calculus are launching a series of space weather buoys into the stratosphere carried aloft by helium balloons each buoy carries a pair of radiation sensors a gps ultimate altimeter and multiple cameras to record the flight but they're mostly just checking for gamma and he had indicated that his measurements were in gamma which was what is usually you know the cosmic source However, NukePro, which is a just massively popular blogger who uh, either works in the industry or at one time did, he is a, a very, very smart person and writes great articles um, about Fukushima and all kinds of re- related nuclear nightmares. He also brought a Geiger counter on a flight, and what he found was all beta. He wrote very interesting findings on my last airplane flight it was during the day so there was good lighting no adjacent passengers so i could get plenty of geiger testing without getting anyone upset there was considerable radiation differences in different areas on the flight path and at the same cruising altitude basically 11 counts per second to 15 counts per second and let me reiterate that was clicks per second not per minute per second this is he wrote this The upper atmosphere is full of radiation, much more so than 20 years ago. Cosmic radiation is various stuff, and what you will pick up on an Inspector Geiger will be gamma. There is no beta radiation in cosmic. So he was astounded at the levels that he was seeing. And, you know, I guess to kind of bring this, like, German wings situation and the radiation in flight situation and the soldiers back full circle and if you studied like you know the work of Doug Doug Roque, Lorraine Murray or um, anything that has to do with depleted uranium then you probably know that following our mission in Afghanistan in the early days and we've used DU all over Iraq Afghanistan um, you know the Gulf War and now it's being used also in the Ukraine there was a large number of murder-suicides that happened to U.S. service members when they came back from those places. There were actually five soldiers that not only killed their wives or other people on the base, but they also killed themselves. They had all been to Afghanistan, and the Army was going crazy about how they were going to try to like contain this kind of news. And it's happened, you know, since then, too. And it's it's very sad that we would do this to our own military and, and experiment on them in this way. And if you think what they've come back with is bad, you should see what it has done to places that we've occupied and what it's done to the human genome. And there's been just horrendous mutations that have happened. Uh, particularly in Fallujah and some of the places that we hit really hard. 
and that's all radiation exposure in a depleted form of it, not the higher concentration of what we've been exposed to since Fukushima.